community uh, by fighting the forest fires. Now I'd like you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance led by Barbara Lopez, our treasurer tax collector. County Council, was there any action in closed session? Uh, nothing to report. Thank you. And at this time, the chair requests additions, deletions, or corrections or additions uh, to the board. In order to take an action on something, it had to uh, arisen subsequent to the posting of the agenda constitute an emergency that requires action prior to our next meeting. Are there any such items? Okay. I have such an item, and it has to do with a mountain lion out in the birch track. And I would ask that we be able to discuss that as an emergency item. The emergency being uh, that unless this is dealt with prior to the school children waiting for school buses at dark, we will have a severe emergency. Um, so I would ask the board uh, give me a motion a second to constitute an emergency. Uh, second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. It'll be on the agenda. Um, but this time, um, well, I'll tell you what, let's take that first. So the situation is, is the Birched Ocean View Hard um, Neighborhood Watch has been documenting a mountain lion that is acting perhaps a little abnormal, um, that is very aggressive, that is showing up at times that is not normal perhaps, uh, and has contacted Fish and Game, who is not been real receptive to doing anything about it and while it has um, taken some goats out of the neighborhood a couple of them that we know of taken cats come up on people's porches been seen in the daylight uh, and have reports of stalking where there's been children and, and uh, adults walking now the critical problem is we're going to have children out there at the bus stop um, some of them before the light the, the sun can, uh, well, it's still dark. Um, and uh, it's going to constitute quite a problem. So what I would like to do is first recognize the neighborhood um, Birch Ocean View Neighborhood Watch that uh, has some input on this and then have a discussion, a brief discussion with this board to get direction to ask the sheriff to please work with Fish and Game and a strategy that can um, help to remove this animal from the neighborhood or at least protect our children from any imminent danger out there. At this time, I'd like to recognize the neighborhood watch from Birch. Please identify yourself and... Okay. Well, hi, I'm Emily Simmons and I am the leader of the Birch Track Neighborhood Watch. Um, I'm here on behalf of my neighborhood to ask you to take action to help us with our dangerous mountain lion problem. Now, we've lived in relative harmony with this mountain lion since at least March. We've had a few minor incidents, we've had some sightings, but it wasn't a problem until just a few weeks ago when all of a sudden this mountain lion has become frighteningly bold and seems to have lost its fear of, hu of humans. In the interest of time, I'm only gonna share one incident of the dozens that I'm aware of. On the evening of August 9th, a woman on LeClaire was home with every light on in her house and regular household noise. She heard what she thought was a cat fight happening on her front porch, opened her door, and three feet away from her on this small enclosed porch was what she first thought was a large yellow dog attacking a cat. She yelled at it and she was about to kick it when it occurred to her it wasn't a large yellow dog, it was a mountain lion. She screamed bloody murder, as I would have. The mountain lion still didn't run off. It just regripped the cat more firmly and then took off with the pet cat. Now, Department of Fish and Wildlife did come up and they investigated and they offered this woman a depredation permit so that she could shoot the animal if it came back again. But her home is surrounded by other homes and she didn't feel that she could safely shoot at the mountain lion without risk of hitting a neighbor or a neighboring home. She also didn't feel qualified to go and track down the mountain lion out onto a vacant lot or out into the forest and dispose of it there and so she declined her depredation permit. 
Uh, what I've heard is that Del Norte County is the only county in Northern California that doesn't have a contract with someone to provide wildlife services. This means we don't have somebody that we can call when there is a problem animal, be it a raccoon, a bear, a mountain lion. Um, there's nobody that we can call to come and remove this animal. If we did have such an entity, then the woman could have had them on her behalf go out and track down and destroy the animal or possibly have removed it, although we've been told that non-lethal methods aren't really allowed with mountain lions. It's reached the point where we can't even let our animals out at night for a potty break without being growled at from something in the dark or having dogs panic and run off whining. It's reached the point where we are terrified of what's going to happen next week when these 8 to 12 children in our very small area are all standing out there in the dark waiting for the school bus. Now, I've got a list of volunteer adults from our neighborhood who are wanting to help watch the bus stops um, in the mornings, and we're looking into some other options too but that's our, our really big fear. We're also afraid that there's going to be a terrible accident if random citizens just start shooting in a panic at this mountain lion in our rather crowded neighborhood. Um, now, we respect the life of wildlife, but we just cannot put its life above the life of a human child, and that is the point that we feel that we are at now. We respectfully request that you take these three actions. One, contact Dave at Fish and Wildlife in Eureka, um, we've been in contact with him. He's very informative, but he is unable to help us because his hands are tied due to policy. He needs more information. He needs um, certain things from us that I'm going to be sharing with my neighborhood to make sure that we're getting that information to him. Number two, get a contract with someone to provide wildlife services. Please, that way if this situation comes up again, a homeowner can have a qualified individual take care of the problem animal instead of it just being a random citizen. And number three, we would like to ask that you re redirect funds if necessary to the sheriff department so that they can increase patrols in our neighborhood, especially at school bus pickup and drop off times. Now, I have here for your consideration a signed petition from my neighbors requesting the removal of the mountain lion. I have some information about the mountain lion problems and Department of Fish and Wildlife regulations for you. And I also have the contact information for Fish and Wildlife for your use. Thank you so much for your help with this Thank matter. Thank you, Emily. If you'll give those to the clerk of the board, she'll make sure that they gets in the record and gets disseminated to us. Any other public comment uh, regarding this issue? Yes. Um, presently residing in Crescent City. The, uh, I'll just read it. I'll just, it's very brief. This is my letter that was published in the Fort Collins, Colorado, and, and it's regarding bears, uh, not specifically the mountain lions, but um, bears, which could be an issue with the wildfires. And I'll just read it. It's to the editor. On September 15th, okay, 19... If, is it I don't mean to interrupt long? you. Well, no. Uh, there's going to be public comment period regarding anything not related to what we're talking about oh, no, now. This is, the, this is the, yeah, this is on okay, the ahead. topic. Yeah. This is uh, it's regarding public safety on the mountain lions and right. bears. Specifically, as if forest fires are causing the animals um, to be in a state of uh, uh, disarray. I don't know what the word, but you know, they're, yeah, they're, they're under stress. On, on September 15th, 1996, I learned the hard way that bear spray is not enough to stop a charging bear. The Anchorage Daily News did a big story on that. It was called A Can of Spray and a Lot of Luck, September 29th, 1996. Although I sprayed the grizzly in its charge, it knocked me on my butt with a sidearm swipe to my chest. Growling and snarling in my face, and according to fishing partner Keith Benner, while it was waving its paw threatening, threateningly at my head, I sprayed the rest of the can into its throat since that was the only target available. The bear ran away, I jumped up, it made a U-turn and charged again. Out of spray, I resigned myself to being killed, turning my back to the bear so as not to see it get me. Fortunately, it only went around me, knocking Keith against a tree before leaving. Be Bear Aware, a pamphlet endorsed and distributed by the U.S. National Park Service, Forest Service, Fish and Wildlife, and Department of the Interior advises bear spray for bear attacks. However, whenever there is a bear attack, wildlife officials respond with firearms, not just bear spray. Moreover, the Anchorage Daily News cited wildlife biologists explaining bear spray does not work on black bears due to a unique protective mucus coating. That was in Pepper Spray Bad Bet, Anchorage Daily News, 10-6, 1996. Until an effective non-lethal means of protection against bears becomes available, the public should be aware bear spray is not enough to stop a charging bear. 
So as you consider the mountain lines, keep that in mind as well about the, the bears. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other public comment on this matter? Okay, back to the board for discussion and direction. Uh, the direction I would seek if there's consensus is to have our administrator work with the sheriff and encourage him to work also with Fish and Wildlife uh, on a strategy to identify and remove um, this big cat from that neighborhood. Uh, sheriff, you got any in input? Appreciate it. And I'm going to ask that the liaison probably is our Natural Resources Committee, uh, Supervisor Howard and Hemmingson, uh, with Fish and Wildlife, the administration, and the sheriff. Chris, do you have something? It's, it's, it's well timed, and in all likelihood, this is a very young animal, maybe a one or two year old animal, and they are unpredictable. They will, in all respects, take people out. And this occurred across the street from my work in Oric. Everybody remembers that occasion where a young animal, in this case a two-year-old mountain lion, took out a full-grown adult. And uh, this is something that we're very appreciative of you bring it to our attention, and this board does need to react. And with that, Chair Finnegan, I will make that motion to second your proposed action. Okay. I got a second on that? Second. Okay. It's moved and seconded uh, to follow the direction uh, that was said. You know, the thing that occurred to me is that at least twice a year you can turn on KTVU Channel 2 in San Francisco. Had this happened in any other community, um, there would have been a mobilization to, for Fish and Wildlife Fish and Game to go in there with the assistance of the sheriffs and the city police to identify and remove this animal. Just because we're up here in the North Coast surrounded by wilderness area and park is no reason not to treat it the same when it's a danger to our children and, and human safety. I would like us to really focus on the idea of finding a person that would be willing to take on depredation permits. And if we have a list of estate trapper, is that? Because we probably have people in our community that are qual quite qual qualified. And if Fish and Game is saying that we don't have one and it requires a contract, would you please bring us back that contract at yeah. the earliest po possible opportunity? Um, and as part of the direction of this motion, I would, if it needs to be an emergency contract, then I think that's part of the, part of the resolution. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries unanimously. Thank you very much for the involvement and neighborhood watch, and we'll do everything we can to support you in keeping our children safe. Thank you. Uh, we're going to jump to number 18, which is to approve and authorize temporary closure of North and South Indian Roads in Smith River from Hollingquit Cemetery to Hollingquit Hall. Um, on Saturday, September 12th, from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Public comment on this? Back to the board. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries unanimously. Number 19 is to waive full reading, reading and by title only, and adopt the proposed amended ordinance of the Board of Supervisors to allow First Five Commission to expand its current membership, not less than five, no more than seven, nor less than seven nor more than nine, two, uh, less than, no less than seven or more than nine is requested by Director of First Five. Uh, can I get a motion on this, please? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Public comment. This was the second reading. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries unanimously. Number 20 is to uh, approve and authorize the chair to sign the memorandum of understanding between the County of Del Norte and the Del Norte Sheriff's Employees Association, SEA, effective September 22nd through October 31st, 2017, as requested by the CAO. Jay? As the board is aware, we've been in negotiations with the Sheriff Employees Association for some time. The agreement before you is the results of those negotiations. Uh, we have tentative agreements, and at this point we are requesting the board to approve that agreement and put it in place for the next two to three years. Excellent. Can I get a motion? Move to approve. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Public comment on this. Back to the board. Supervisors? That's great. Yeah. Excellent great. job to all, all concerned. Yeah, absolutely. Of, Good a lot job. Of work, too much time. <laughs> uh, pull the vote, please. 
Supervisor McClure? Yes. Supervisor Hemmingson? Yes. Supervisor Gitlin? Yes. Supervisor Howard? Yes. Chair Finnegan? Yes, which takes us to number 21, which would be to discuss and direct staff to forward to the Department of Fish and Wildlife the petition to repeal the Blue Creek closure decision. Um, who wants to take this up? Brief report. Elizabeth? So this is an item that was, um, I believe, discussed by the board several times in open session. Um, and there is, under the government code, the ability of the board to request to either repeal or amend um, the um, regulations that were passed by the, um, the uh, Fish, and Game, uh, Fish and Wildlife Commission in regard to the closure of Blue Creek. Um, this petition um, would um, require them to act within 30 days um, it, to respond um, either um, going forward with a hearing to uh, repeal or to take up an amendment um, if, a, if a repeal is not possible at this point. Okay. Um, can I get a motion on, uh, well, actually we can do it by consensus, but I would rather have a motion to send this letter to Fish and Game and to work with staff. So moved. Uh, Second. Moved and seconded. And, and I'm not so sure that we shouldn't maybe copy it to the governor. He's the appointing person for the Fish and Game Commission, so I think we should. And, and I just want to say, uh, Elizabeth, you did an excellent job in uh, capturing, um, uh, I think, all of the board's thoughts and uh, and uh, especially uh, how the meetings um, culminated uh, to this which was just totally unbelievable public comment on this issue okay, back to the board of the supervisors I think supervisor McClure had a great suggestion it does need to go to our uh, natural resources director Laird John Laird okay so we'll add that on the CC. Um, great job. We know it's going to be reviewed again in December uh, without rehashing all our dismay with this property. You know, you did excellent. Yeah. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Opposed? Carries unanimously. Number 22 is to approve and adopt the resolution of the Del Norte County Board of Supervisors proclaiming the existence of a local emergency, requesting a governor's declaration as requested by the CAO. Uh, this is a step in the protocol regarding uh, local emergencies. Obviously, we have some fires in Del Norte County. Um, there was a local emergency declared um, by title. I'm the OES director, so I'm able to do that before we can bring that back to the Board of Supervisors. Primarily, this is to be able to start the EOC process and to be able to document any resource requests that we might need to support, in this case, uh, the feds that are up there fighting the fires at this point along with Cal Fire. So this is a step. Uh, we may not hit that threshold that allows for reimbursement, but in this point uh, we're, we're taking that step and we'll be prepared. Very good. Can I get a motion on this resolution? Motion to approve. And second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the resolution uh, by the Del Mar County Supervisors proclaiming the existence of a local emergency. Public comment on this issue. Okay, back to the supervisors. Final comments? Pull the vote, please. Supervisor Gitlin? Yes. Supervisor McClure? Yes. Supervisor Hemmingson? Yes. Supervisor Howard? Yes. Chair Finnegan? Yes. Let's take up the consent agenda. Can I get a motion on the consent agenda, please? Uh, Chairman, can we uh, pull seven for discussion on the consent? Sure. Um, can I get a motion, please? Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda, minus item number seven. Public comment. Okay, back to the board. Final comments. Hold the vote, please. Supervisor Gitlin? Yes. Supervisor Hemmingson? Yes, I need to recuse myself uh, on item number five for conflict of interest. Okay. Supervisor McClure? Yes. Supervisor Howard? Yes. Chair Finnegan? Yes. Uh, within the consent agenda was proclamation, Del Norte County Proclamation of Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, whereas the American Cancer Fund for Children and Kids Cancer Connection uh, report cancer is the leading cause of death by disease among U.S. children between infancy and age 15. And this tragic disease is detected in more than 15,000 of our uh, country's young people each and every year. 
And whereas one in five of our nation's children loses his or her battle with cancer, uh, many infants, children, and teens will suffer from long-term effects of comprehensive treatment, including secondary cancers. And whereas founded over 20 years ago by Stephen Firestein, a member of the philanthropic Max Factor Cosmetics family, the American Cancer Fund for Children, Incorporated, and Kids Cancer Connection are dedicated to helping these children and their families. And whereas the American Cancer Fund for Children and Kids Cancer Connection provide a variety of vital patient uh, physiological uh, services to children undergoing cancer treatment at the Lucille Packard Children's Hospital in Stanford in Palo Alto and University of California at San Francisco uh, Benoff Children's Hospital, as well as participating hospitals throughout the country, thereby enhancing the quality of life for these children and their families. And whereas the American Cancer Fund for Children and Kids Cancer Connection also sponsor Courageous Kids Recognition Award Ceremonies, Community Get Well Cards, and Hospital Celebrations in honor of children's detriment, determination, and bravery to fight the battle against childhood cancer. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Delaware County Board of Supervisors hereby proclaim the month of September 2015 as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in Delmar County, passed and adopted uh, this 25th day of August 2015. Is anybody here to receive this? There is not. Okay, we will get that to them. Um, a sad situation that we keep trying to make the best of. Uh, item number seven, Supervisor Gitlin. Yes, I, I, I pulled this item not because I oppose it. I think it's a great thing, but I thought, thought the public in the spirit of transparency would want to know what this is all about. And sometimes we don't read the fine print. So, Tony, I see you're here. Okay. Would you tell us what this $140,000 grant application is all about? Okay, well, first of all, this is a grant program that's being offered by the California Cultural and Historical Endowment, um, which is designed to help preserve California's history and historical archives. Um, as most of you know, the Flynn Center houses our historical archives, pieces of history that if destroyed are lost forever. I mean, this is a good example. This is the Board of Supervisors, 1880 handwritten meeting notes. Should our roof fail, excuse me, <clears throat> should our roof fail, these are gone forever. So basically what we're proposing is the replacement of the roof of the Flynn Center along with the purchase of museum quality bookcases that's going to line the, the foyer of the chambers as well as possibly the back corridor by the main entrance or the back entrance. Um, so we're able to display these and preserve them for the future. So basically, you're uh, attempting to apply for a grant that's gonna save the county over $70,000 in doing what you're describing. Oh, at least. Thank you. If not more. Can I get a motion on this, please? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Public comment. Great work, Tony. Pull the vote, please. Supervisor Hemmingson? Yes. Supervisor McClure? Yes. Supervisor Howard? Yes. Supervisor Gitlin? Yes. Chair Finnegan? Yes. Budget transfer, number 14, approved budget transfer 0624, allow for the unspent AB 109 funds to offset the cost of housing uh, realigned offenders at the jail. I move that we approve the uh, realignment, the uh, budget transfer. Second. Moved and seconded. Public comment. Okay, back to the board. Hold the vote, please. Supervisor Howard? Yes. Supervisor Gitlin? Yes. Supervisor McClure? Yes. Supervisor Hemmingson? Yes. Chair Fennigan? Yes. Okay, I'm going to start things a little bit differently here, mainly because I'm going to have to leave early and turn it over to Supervisor Hemmingson, the vice chair. I have to catch a flight to the California Transportation Commission meeting uh, regarding replacing the road tax as well as uh, trying to solidify our funds at 199 again. Uh, so just to give you an idea what I've been up to very briefly in the past couple of weeks, went to a chamber mixer with the Coast Guard Auxiliary, neighborhood watch program at the Birch Tract, as you heard, uh, attended an exploration committee meeting between the Child Care Council and First Five regarding indoor play space, uh, community effort, place uh, for teens, uh, not just a, a, an extra gymnasium, but also offices and provide services perhaps. Attended the Finance Corporation uh, for California State Associations in Sacramento, and where we selected a new executive vice president. Went to RCRC, the Regional Council of Rural Counties, uh, where among other things we talked about dead and diseased trees. There are 14,450,000 of them in California right now. That's up from about 3 million a couple of years ago. Um, first they get diseased and die, and then they burn. 
uh, it, it's a incredible problem that most people are not aware of. Um, there is, I did bring back, in fact, I believe all the supervisors received it, the uh, highlights of the RCRC board meeting, so it'll be in that, uh, in your packets as well. Um, good work at the Salmon Festival, really enjoyed that. Attended the Safe and Healthy Family Goals Committee. There's some excellent work being done um, by the administration and by the support staff regarding the children's budget. Uh, it'll be an addendum, uh, an amendment to our budget uh, coming up this year. And uh, again, had another California State Association Finance Corporation call. And it also took a little bit of time for, on two things. One, um, went to a family wedding, and two, had a root canal. And the family <laughs> wedding was a <laughs> heck of a lot more fun. <laughs> OK, wow. so with that, it is uh, 1025. We're going to have public comment. Um, a little levity, you know. <laughs> Public comment, please. Any member of the uh, audience that wishes to address the board on any item, uh, on or off the agenda, uh, please step forward. Uh, keep your, try to limit yourself to three minutes. Identify yourself, and um, how are you? Good, Good morning. morning, Mark Raintree, Fort Dick. Uh, hopefully, you all know me. I recently passed out the Del Norte County Library's five-year goals. This is the executive overview summary for you. We'll be fleshing this out. But I wanted to make sure that we got the communication out. We've been listening to the public. We did multiple surveys. This is the responses that we've gotten back, and we've prioritized them. Now is the fun part of matching our budget to what we're hoping to get done in the next five years. If you have any questions, please contact any of us at the Del Norte County Library Trustees Board and our manager, Tina Capshaw. Thank you. you know, I, I, it's time for comment, not for conversation, but I really appreciate this. This is excellent. This is uh, this Great. kind of communication between another elected body is, is phenomenal. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I identified that as a need in our community and for our library. And I wanted to also, while you're here, notate that in our healthy uh, uh, children and families healthy goal committee, that a member of the library board was there to consider the children's budget as well. So excellent. thank you. Thank you. Great job. Next, please. Good morning, I'm Elizabeth Henry, I live in the county. I'm here today to request that this Board of Supervisors develop a code of ethics and conduct for itself. This is to provide a group standard of behavior to measure against that, and that can enforce violations. I'm requesting it because I think that it would have prevented what I consider an embarrassing situation that's developed involving Supervisor Gitlin's appointment to the Area 1 Agency uh, Advisory Council. You upheld that uh, appointment even though you had a very firm request from the Executive Director and uh, they said that they would take action if you did not. Well, they did take action on August 18th. They voted to reject Supervisor Gitlin's appointment and ask for a different appointment. Uh, watching the discussion, I could kind of tell that you didn't really know where to hang your hat, what was the argument, and it all ended up being um, Ms. Kraft's fault that she hadn't made it clear who really had asked for him to be removed. And it turned out it was an executive committee who meets because they're a bi-monthly group and need, need a group that can make decisions in between. I think if you have a standard of conduct, then it can help uh, you decide whether things, violations have happened and uh, I also, I'm concerned because of at times treatment of the public and uh, this happened again at the solid waste meeting and I'm only saying this because this time I was called out by Supervisor Gitlin. I was really surprised to hear my name. Of course it came after such notables as Ted Ward and Martha McClure who was uh, blamed for everything in the world. but. Uh, I mean, the words he used for me was that he called, said, I displayed a level of intolerance that offends and besmirches. He had a copy of one of my emails, which I had not copied to him, which he said I had. And uh, those emails which requested that people come to the meeting, that was st very straightforward. He said that I was enthusiastically supporting mob mentality. You know, I'm really offended at, at being... <laughs> Uh, call those names, and I think that's the kind of thing that a code of ethics and conduct covers. Uh, you all sign it, you all know what the rules are, it's not an individual education like the state 
does for you every other year. You have to sign that you've been trained in that. And that's very helpful, but I think you as, as a board needs to, to set standards. So I hope that you would do that. Uh, most cities, a lot of counties have those codes, and I think that they would help you operate uh, much more efficiently and better in very difficult situations. So thank you very much. Thank you. Next, please. As long as you'll, uh, excuse me, Victoria, Dickey County, um, as long as you're going to be discussing rules and how to run meetings and um, how people can speak in your chairs, um, I would request Just, that. We're not. Well, someone might. <laughs> <laughs> if you bring it up, I would appreciate that you consider going back to uh, the parliamentary procedures. I know they're a little more cumbersome. But there's been so much discussion about them. They've been in place for so many, many years that when something comes up, there is already a procedure there. Um, I don't like Rosenberg. I think that it leaves way too much to discretion. I believe that when you end up disagreeing with someone, there isn't a procedure that's already set. You're hearing the public saying, hey, can't do this. Um, I don't find Rosenberg to be very helpful. Uh, I don't know what any one, uh, when I go to look at it and I read it, I go, okay, where has that been determined? Uh, most of the parliamentary procedures have books. I, I think I have five of them. One's a cartoon. It's really the easiest one to read and it gives you an overall picture. Uh, and you're going to have to learn something. Why not learn something that is standard throughout? You go to um, other board meetings, you go to other kinds of um, uh, government meetings of all kinds. If you can get to that same standard, I know it may be a little bit more reading for you and you may have to learn something new or something old, depending upon how you look at it. Uh, but I think that would be uh, a much better um, set of rules to run your meetings by. Just my opinion. Thank you. Next, please. Any other public comment? Yeah. yeah, yeah no. Sorry. I was going to wait till the end. Oh, is there somebody else? Um, my name is Christopher Bruce Diley. Um, currently residing, well, kind of residing here. I was woke up at 1.30 in the morning by the police. I couldn't, told I couldn't sleep in my van, so I was forced out of town. And I was told I could park along the highway, and, but there's signs all the way down there saying you can't park and camp. Uh, so I don't know where a person goes, but my existence is very precarious. Um, this is regarding public safety, um, and in particular, uh, the county court ordering people, I, not just to reiter reiter reiterate briefly, um, when the county judicial system court orders people to Alcoholics Anonymous, AA is religious, and they should not be doing that. It hasn't been effective. I, already, I went over this, and I showed that in AA, AA's own literature, it shows over and over and over again that AA is religious, even though they tell people when they're court ordered that it's a spiritual program, not religious. The problem with this is I came through uh, Larry, Laramie, Wyoming, just passed an anti-gay gay discrimination ordinance, and Anchorage, Alaska is, has a proposed anti-gay discrimination ordinance. The problem here is, is that Crescent City does not have an anti-gay discrimination ordinance. If, in the future, they, they do have one, and people are being court-ordered into Alcoholics Anonymous by the county, there can be a conflict there, because that can be uh, forcing gay people to attend religious programs. And particularly, uh, Celebrate Recovery is also people are court ordered to that all over the country. And that's explicitly religious. Meets in churches, etc. cetera. Um, now here, here uh, AA, they have the young, court, young people are being court ordered. Drug and alcoholics uh, uh, are being court ordered and, and they attend the meetings over here at St. Paul's Episcopal Church. Um, the, the, the problem is that uh, the, the AA is now also being required for affordable housing. I've driven around the country. If, in order to get into places of housing, I could have stayed in a place down in San Luis Obispo, but they said you have to attend AA meetings for three nights a week. I said, I've got 30 years of sobriety. I've been heavily involved in AA. You're going to force me in order to get housing to attend AA? That's wrong. It's wrong. Um, 
And so the, the last point is that this comes back to uh, the, uh, the, the blight. When I first showed up here two, two months ago, the front, the front page of the newspaper showed that the, uh, the blight here is a problem for Crescent City and that basically it says that, you know, it, it equated it with trash and homeless people were equated with blight, with trash. I've been harassed severely since I've been here in the two months, maybe because I've been outspoken against AA matters. I'm not, I'm not sure why, but there's no protection for that. Um, the, uh, the, you've got no recourse. And so my last point here is that the, um, the socioeconomics definition of eugenics, I'll quote from, uh, this could be interesting to, uh, you're, to this You're out guy. of time, sir. Okay, okay, just, thank you very much. Okay, just, I'm, I'm just trying to finish this up. The, uh, no, thank you. I appreciate is, uh, it. The, the weak and the unfit are considered an unnecessary burden upon Thank you. society. That's Margaret Sanger, Planned Parenthood. Thank you. All right, thanks. I've got nowhere to go. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Next, please. If you keep an eye on your three minutes, it'll go yellow at 30 seconds and then red, please stop. Thank you. I like to see the Board of Supervisors pass yourself. a resolution. Pardon me? Please identify yourself. I will. I'm getting to that. My name is Randall South, and my family owns property at the end of Lakeview Drive, at 1175 Lakeview Drive. And I'd like to see the Board of Supervisors pass a resolution to request assistance from the Hoopa AmeriCorps. I did fax you folks an application for that, and that's for the purpose of removing uh, invasive species uh, in the Lake Earl Wildlife Area. Uh, there is invasive species on county property. It damages the asphalt. It kills the trees. The convention is to remove it from all adjacent property owners. Uh, I've consulted with Deborah Jake, Helen Ferguson, and there is unanimous support. However, we have not been able to get wildlife to respond. Uh, it's gone all the way to the director who apparently didn't feel that I'm important enough to respond to me. So anyway, nothing new. Uh, I'm here for two issues. I did try to get both of these on the calendar, but due to my unfamiliarity with protocol, I didn't make it. The second issue is to increase the fine for uh, the minimum fine for littering from 250 to, to was it $2,000? I think it's the maximum for a misdemeanor. There's good reason to do that, and that is because um, uh, we got a serious blight problem. You go into Brookings and you get greeted with a beautiful sign that says littering, minimum penalty 5000 And under this proposal that I'm making to increase the fine from $250 to $2,000, there's no jail time. I'm not recommending jail time. They don't want to pay it, can't afford it, then uh, the judge can order them to community service. If they don't want to do the community service or refuse to, then a warrant issued for the arrest should follow and they should be ordered by the judge to alder camp for warden supervised trash collection. So that's my proposal. I'll be happy to put it on the agenda for more in-depth discussion. And when I have time, I'll try to get you the consents from the adjacent property owners. It's pretty much unanimous. As a matter of fact, most people are terrified. Um, it's quite a problem. I mean, you don't want to see trees dying and increased forest fires and and the county has enough financial problems. I don't think they want to pave the road down the line. So hopefully you'll consider it. Thanks so much. Thank you. Next, please. Good morning. My name is Jeff Harris. I won't take too much of your time. Um, I am the new county and district superintendent of schools. Welcome, I Jeff. Want, thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself and let you know that um, I know the long history of this board and working with the students and the children of Del Norte County. I'm very excited to be part of that. And this morning, I've seen more of that. And so as we move ahead, I just want you to know that we are very excited about building our relationships throughout the county, throughout the communities with different government agencies. And um, again, hello. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you. Jeff, you got a couple of groups. Um, you have a couple of groups, uh, youth leadership groups. Yes. And uh, pledge to them as we used to do or I've done in the past. Uh, as chair is host a meeting or ask the high school to host a meeting of the Board of Supervisors out there and allow some of your civics classes, although I'm not sure you teach civics anymore. <laughs> it's called something else. Uh, so we'd love to be invited out to do just that. Wonderful. Okay. Absolutely. Thanks Thank very you. much, Jeff. With that, I apologize. I am going to have to turn the meeting over to uh, Supervisor Hemmingson um, to go catch a plane. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> 
Okay, and with that, uh, we had a 10:30 timed item. Oh, I'm sorry. We still have sure. public, public comment. comment. You left right in the middle of public comment. I'm uh, sorry. I'll be I apologize. Very brief. Thank you, uh, honorable board, board, board members and staff. Uh, I'm Lieutenant Hal Rosendahl of the Crescent City CHP. I just want to make a brief introduction that I'll be filling in for Lieutenant Toma, who's away on another assignment for the next few months. So, if you call over there asking for him, he won't be there. <laughs> and so, please uh, refer your uh, inquiries to me. And if you have any questions, please call later. Thank Great. You. Thanks. Hal, no disrespect. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. The plane won't wait for me. <coughs> I didn't realize it wasn't going to be a full three-minute presentation. I can have Welcome that effect board. on people sometimes. <laughs> so. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other public comment? Okay, I'm going to close the public comment period then, and we're going to move on to our 1030 timed item, uh, which is a uh, way full reading and read by title only. Introduce and conduct a public hearing on an update to the master fee ordinance as requested by our county administrative officer. Uh, we haven't, uh, we haven't uh, brought forward the fee ordinance for a couple of years, I mean, primarily because of the, uh, the need. But every two years, typically, we'll bring it forward to review existing fees and then address those as they're needed. Uh, as the board is probably aware, or I will make them aware, fees can only be charged for what they cost to provide. So inside of this, uh, this request, this amendment, are fees that are associated with the animal shelter, the assessor, community development has a few of those, uh, board of supervisors on public hearings, building maintenance. Um, all of those have been addressed through a process of having the department head review those fees and determine whether or not there's been a change in the, uh, in the cost associated with providing the, the fee. So today what we're asking the board to do is waive the first reading um, and set it for a future public hearing so we can have a discussion over any of these fees at that point. So we're presenting these to the public today. Okay, great. And with that, I will open the public hearing and ask for any public comment. Okay, seeing no public comment, then I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the board. Get a motion. Uh, Jay, can I just ask you a quick, quick question on the fees? <laughs> Probably a silly one, I'll ask it anyway. Did anything go down in cost? Uh, yes, they did. Okay, would actually. you tell the folks because well, the we, all know, we all want fees to be as low as they can, so please let us know. The proposal with the Community Development Department right now actually deals with a grading permit fee and as the board has addressed in the past, there was a percentage-based fee. They are now looking at an alternative of, of charging actual cost so that it's more of an equal cost across the board for large projects and small projects. That's the most significant one. Um, as you go through this, there may be a couple of smaller ones that were reduced. Um, in general terms, they would be associated with um, I believe the uh, the uh, cost of uh, doing business is either the elimination of a fee or um, you know the the actual time spent has been reduced due to technology and um, I believe under the housekeeping you'll see that there is an elimination of a special fee for alternative on-site sewage disposal systems so each one of the departments will review each each fee that's in there and determine what that cost is. Um, I can tell you that associated with the recreation department, we have fees in there that will not meet what the minimum is to actually charge those fees. It costs more to provide that than what we charge. A lot of that is to encourage participation of children, um, especially those that might be at risk. So teen league and, ch and the youth is actually lower than what it costs. The adults tend to pay the full amount. So they, it does subsidize it to some amount, some, some uh, amount, and I think that as you go through these, and like I said, we this is the first introduction. As you look at those, if you have questions, we'll address those at the next meeting. Mr. Vice Chairman, there's no other comment. I'd like to make that motion. Okay, I got a motion. I'll make the motion to waive the full reading on the updated master fee ordinance as requested by the county administrative officer. Great. Can I get a second? 
I have a motion and a second. Kylie, could you pull the vote, please? Supervisor Howard? Yes. Supervisor Gitlin? Yes. Supervisor McClure? Yes. Vice Chair Hemmingson? Yes. Okay, we're going to, um, I think we'll move back to uh, brief reports from uh, supervisors. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, Supervisor Howard. Sorry to see the CHP officer leave early. Had an inter excellent interaction with the CHP this week in uh, trying to recover a stolen vehicle. Sometimes uh, good deeds get the best of you in this county, and we had one out of Alexander Dairy that got the best of us. And fortunately, it was resolved very. Thanks, Sharon. Fortunately, it was resolved very quickly by. Um, CHP this week on Friday and they acted in a very excellent and uh, swift manner and I really compliment them and their actions here in the community. Um, do want to acknowledge the work that the county had put in place through the HERO program which is a renewable energy program available to all citizens in the community of Del Norte County where you could have um, your renewable energy projects like wind and solar available to you at, and financed by the state. And uh, I saw the notice come out in the triple kit last week and it was great to see it in place and there and I hope this City of Crescent City falls suit here soon and gets the program available to city residents. But I just want everybody to know that that program is available in Del Norte County. If you want to take advantage of renewable energy in your in your home and don't have a way to finance it the state's willing to help you out with that kind of project it's it's a great effort and uh, it's going on throughout the country not just in the state of california i do want to acknowledge the passing of les moen um, it was sad for us to hear a longtime resident of donart county great person advocate for development in our area and uh, he will be sorely missed i was able to attend uh, a meeting with green diamond resource company this last week, they were very interested in hearing about their perception in the community. And the reason they've requested this is twofold. One, they've uh, entered into some new certification programs that require them to do more community outreach. And I thought that was excellent given the fact that I think all of us have seen in the last three years more logging trucks rolling up and down Highway 101. It's, uh, for me personally, it's good to see because it means additional tax revenue from timber yield tax into our community coffers that really helps support us. And I know those receipts dropped tremendously in the, in the last 15, 20 years, but there has been a minor resurgence and it was good to hear Green Diamond getting more active as those forces have now come into their third rotation and they'll be able to take advantage of some of that additional growth. And uh, I'd encourage them to continue the public outreach that they've begun and initiated last week in our community and compliment uh, Vice President Neil Ewald and uh, Gary Reinerson and John Davis for coming up and opening their doors to the community and being transparent about what they wish to do in Del Norte County. <clears throat> I attended the first uh, resource committee meeting with uh, Supervisor Hemmingson. Uh, issues that we addressed, we've discussed here in front of the public. One in particular that we will be concentrating on in depth is the DWR issue as it relates to groundwater regulation. The committee has uh, found an approach that might potentially work best for us, and we're moving down that path to communicate with DWR in hopes that we could find a, something that works for both of us in regards to the regulations. So Del Norte County is not placed in a one-size-fits-all program for the state of California, which we cannot afford as a county to implement programs that come with some of these state mandates, but no financial assistance. Um, it'll be good to see uh, Mr. Harris today. I'm looking forward to the special uh, school systems implementation team meeting at 3.30 today. Looking forward to discussing literacy programs that the school began implementing last year and partnering with the Del Norte County Board of Supervisors on. It's uh, great that you made the outreach and effort today to come and, and really seal that partnership that your predecessor, Don Olson, had really complimented himself with during his tenure as superintendent. So thank you again for coming today. 
Um, I will be attending tomorrow in Sacramento at the request of Eric Loft and Joe Hobbs a meeting on elk at 1.30 at their uh, branch office. Um, this is specific to discuss the environmental uh, impact statement that plans to uh, complement the management plan that they've already discussed here in Delnor County in front of the board, but more importantly, this uh, ES that they plan on discussing really helps them come to consideration on whether or not they need to increase the number of tags or placement in, elk in different areas of the county or in the region to help reduce or control numbers at a, at a rate that at least we here in Delnor County s seem to think that uh, needs to take place. Um, also, with the increasing number of fires here in our community, I was glad to see the Daily Triplet, Triplicate publish an article that was out of the LA Times. It was an editorial piece uh, on August 13th. I encourage you all to read it if you already haven't. But it's the article, um, it's not new, and the ideas in the article aren't new, but it's, a, it's to rethink how we manage our national force. And as a community that interfaces a great deal of our boundaries with the national forest and deal now with policies that have been put in place by uh, Congress and presidents before us, um, we wrestle with, again, one-size-fits-all approaches that don't always work best for our national force. And it puts us in jeopardy as a community when we really cannot go into some of these areas and control wildfire because we're not allowed to have the tools that are necessary to make things work. And listening on Friday in Hayuchi to some of our folks that are fighting these fires and they're on the front lines and to hear them express concern and they were reserved, but concern that says, you know, we have to take certain steps that are necessary to get out and control these. And, and specifically when we get in the wilderness area, we have to contact groups to see if it's okay to even set foot in these areas, it causes me a great deal of hesitation and angst in the sense that why now have we set not only the state of California up, but other places in the nation like Washington to catastrophic wildfire because we as people in the United States want to see a certain perception in our forest. And it's, it's concerning. Um, I was glad to see at the end of this article the Wildlife, Wildfire Management Act of 2015 that's going to be authored by Senator Maria Cantwell, um, Senator from Washington State. I'd really like uh, CAO Serena to follow up with our lobbyists in Washington, D.C. to see if there's any way we could um, connect and communicate with Ms. Cantwell and find uh, whatever support we could give her to help make some of these tools available to our Forest Service to actually better manage our landscapes. I um, also want to congratulate a, a wedding of Joseph and Alexa Alexander that will be happening this weekend and uh, it's great to see young couples, young driven couples come back to this community and uh, share not only their businesses but their lives with the rest of Donor County. And uh, I'm going to end on a personal note, one that's caused me a great deal of um, trouble. And it's, it's one that I want to express to the community because I think it sets a precedent that we here in Delnark County have a difficult time wrestling with. And it's a precedent of whether or not we know what's best for us as a community. And it has to do a lot with what the state of California has asked us to be. They've asked us to be because of decreasing resources like fisheries and timber to become a tourism community. And because we've been asked to become a tourism community, we therefore need ways and resources to gain not only business here in our area that serves that tourist community, but we also need the money that spins off that to support our government. There was an action this week, by the Cal or last week, by the California Coastal Commission on a development um, at the old Nautical Inn restaurant site. Many of you are familiar with this. It operated as a magical place for diners over the years to enjoy the ocean front. But we had a developer come to our area last year and propose a small condominium complex on that site. Worked through a local consulting engineer and worked with our county community development department to make sure all the I's were dotted and all the T's were crossed. 
In the end, our Del Norte Local Planning Commission and our Community Development Project unanimously supported the project and blessed it to go forward to the Coastal Commission. However, the Coastal Commission staff, specifically the staff, did not agree with the project. And they came up with issues, substantial issues is what they call them, to throw this project into what they call de novo, which is a kind of a, a black hole to a certain extent, where projects languish for years sometimes until the staff has time to address those projects. And specifically, they've held this up on two things, geology and what they call ESHA, and ESHA is environmentally sensitive habitat. Many of you recall that specific to the airport issues that we've had in Donart County and mitigating those airport issues as it relates to wetlands. This was, they called the bluff that this condo sits on, ESHA. Whether or not it's debatable, we will see here in the future and hopefully the staff and the um, project proponent can get together and work things out. But what I want to say in particular, as these projects move forward in Coastal Commission and within Delnar County, if we have a project in Delnar County that has been blessed by our community development department, has met all the needs of our local coastal plan, and has come before the Planning Commission and then has been blessed, and we have a representative that sits on the California Coastal Commission, I want to make sure, I really want to make sure that that background is understood. So if that project is called into question, our one proponent on the California Coastal Commission is able to raise their hand and say, hey, I'd like to hear this project opened up for discussion instead of not raising their hand and just letting it slide into a de novo process that could take two to three years to have resolution. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that brief report. Uh, Supervisor McClure. Yes, I'm going to report out on some things and then I will com I'll comment in relationship to the de novo hearing and the finding of substantial issue and how the system works. Um, I participated in the Senior Center meeting and also in the Senior Center policy development. We're doing a new handbook for employees, which is going to be a long, fairly arduous process. Um, the Historical Society met. We also are working on the um, museum grant that um, the county applied for today. It's, it's the first of three grant cycles that are identified to assist in communities maintaining their historical um, information and, and protecting their, the, um, the buildings. In particular, this is very uncommon to have grants available for capital improvement projects. So we're looking forward to hopefully keeping both of those grants going forward. Um, Redwood Park Association met and um, our tourism is up by, I think it was 14% compared to this time last year, which is a nice increase because it was also increased last year. I um, had a solid waste meeting that was um, quite eventful and um, must be a new movement that we're going to publicly attack one another from the dais, but I'll figure that out. Um, Redwood Coast Transit Association met. We, everything is working there. We've just finalized the agreement with State Parks and Redwood National Park that we will be on the trip to Eureka the, but that the bus takes. It will now go through Prairie Creek so people could get off and hike for the day and be able to get back on the transit bus later. So it's kind of a nice a nice addition to our community. I, um, it, I visited my first major encampment in Del Norte County to talk to the folks about their options of living in very um, vicarious ways and where they're located. Um, most of them felt that there was just nothing that they could do and so there was a kind of sense of empathy of, you know, of just of, of hopelessness and um, talking to them, there were um, two children in the encampment. I could see signs of other children that had been there. There were probably six to seven women and then several men and dogs. So it's something that I really believe that the community, we need to put a voice on and we need to figure out what we, what, how, how are we going to be of assistance to 
the less fortunate in our community because um, it was really sad talking to the woman with the with about a 12 year old boy you know where she she had gone they were camping she had put everything inside of her tent somebody had come with a knife and had cut up open her tent and had taken the meager belongings that she had so I just really believe that it's time for us to rather than keep pushing people and rousting them out and you know chasing them from the beach to behind Safeway to the beach again that we actually have a public dialogue of what we need to do and I've got some ideas I've been reading on some different programs that are happening in Hawaii Utah and San Francisco and San Diego and I think it's just a time that we um, participate instead of um, degrade people that live in our community that are that are definitely troubled. Um, I also would like to make a forward request to, uh, I guess, community de development that we take bite the bullet and we make a decision where the crosswalk is on Cooper, and we make a decision of where there should be a stop sign doesn't have to be a traffic uh, analysis it can be this board can make that type of decision so it's going to require a two by two with the city to make sure the city's in agreement because we're half and half on that on that street but um, it's just time that we take care of that I spent about two hours on the phone with the person in relationship to the elk issues and the apparent um, one group want to get a dig at like a over our arching degradation type permit and, and really you know make the herd a lot smaller other companies like green diamond and alexander dairy they get because they're private management lands with an agreement when there's an improvement on their land in the watershed or an habitat improvement they get these elk tags and the elk tags for the bulls are very very lucrative in fact, Green Diamond, when they got their, I don't know how many elk tags, they went immediately to a, um, a big game hunter vendor. And they sell for a lot of money. And so the people who are like saying, I can't keep my cows in the yard because these elk are coming in, they want the degradation uh, permits. But other people want to get these improvement permits where they and they only take out, they take out the bull, and it's a bull hunt and a cow hunt, but apparently Green Diamond donated their cow hunt back because they really didn't want to have anybody else but the big game hunters hunting on their property for these giant elk. And it, it, so there's a, people are not comfortable with how everything is going, and, I, and, and this group of people, they didn't know how they were going to do it in relationship to getting their voice heard. I also have been um, with Mike McGuire's office, I think maybe at the last meeting it was probably reported out about the resource officer. And then I want to say that I listened to um, KFUG's, their man on the street, for, and I really believe that you should probably enter it into some kind of public radio competition because it was very, very good. You did a great job. And I've also been following the Crescent City Forward folks that are, trying to communicate with one another in a positive manner and figure out how we can do some stuff as a community to have a um, richer life here. So that, that is working. Now, as far as the permit, I will talk a little bit about that in relationship to the Coastal Commission. In order for a substantial issue to be heard, you have to have three or more um, commissioners gonna hear that issue. And I couldn't get two other commissioners to answer that issue because primarily the proposal was ch was asking for an eight foot setback on the bluff at um, at uh, where the restaurant currently is and the analysis of the uh, the genial uh, of the geology report was an aerial and when they were drilling to do a to test the drill stopped but it was still loamy material, but that they said, well, it's probably okay. So there were some questions on the geological report that in the reality, if the bluff failed at an eight foot setback, that's it. That's the only bite you get at that apple because normally setbacks on bluffs are between 25 and 100 feet. So an eight foot setback was really the trigger issue. 
and I'm not going to, um, literally, I'm not going to try to take something that I know I'm not going to be able to succeed in. I had diligently worked with the applicant and the applicant's representative and our, our people here because there were three options for it not to go to de, to, to de novo. One was to withdraw the permit, one was to waive the 49-day extension, and one was to ask that the county uh, cancel its final act, its final action. But the, land, the, the, the developer, he chose not to. And when I talked to him about it, he said he just, you know, he was driving down the Pacific Coast, saw this piece of property, bought it, thought it was going to be a wonderful idea, and he's already spent a considerable amount of money, and he's 80 years old, and he's not sure if he wants to go forward. So, but I, I tried my darndest to be able to try to salvage that, and it's also still salvageable. And de novo doesn't necessarily have to languish. De novo means to start again, to start anew, start over. So um, they can, the applicant and the applicant's representative can continue to work with staff on the issues and can resubmit, but the, it will be resubmitted at the Coastal Commission level, not at the local level. Thanks. Thank you. Another brief explanation and a brief report. Supervisor Gitlin. You expect another brief one, Mr. Vice Chairman? I'll try to be brief. First of all, I want to applaud Supervisor Howard for his comments on that. Regrettably, that nautical in issue is redoing that. Is, it's not a standalone item. We've been having these problems with the Coastal Commission for years. It all comes down to economics, economic development. It's the lifeblood of our community. It doesn't exist, and we have obstacles like this facing us time after time after time. It's not standalone in Delnor County. So, Supervisor Howard, thank you for bringing that to our attention. After our um, previous board meeting, I attended uh, our Visitors Bureau meeting, which we have to get today at 3.30, but what was discussed there is we have a new brochure. It's out a little late, unfortunately, but this is a very valuable tool, and uh, it gives us all the who, what, where, when, whys of Del Norte County, and it's all been distributed to area hotels, RV parks, so there's plenty of summer left, and uh, I'm convinced that I'm hopeful that People will take advantage of it, stay an extra day or two, and spend more money in our county. And they did a very good job. Visitors Bureau did a very good job on this brochure. You should hopefully see that and uh, agree. I'm sure you would with that. I attended our, in, our quarterly Intergovernment Relations Committee meeting at the Wastewater Treatment Facility. Uh, the partners there, and hopefully our, our school board member partner will be participating in that, but we didn't have very many participants this time, just the city and the county. And we... Uh, updated each other on some of the projects that you've been hearing about all along. Lots of blight projects to report about. I want to commend volunteer Greg Sentinar, who brought his power washer equipment, mixed in some very strong graffiti removal uh, ingredients, and with the permission of the Social Security Office on Herald Street, removed long-standing gang graffiti on the trash bin walls facing the street. So I want to say a big thank you to Greg for taking a bite out of blight. Uh, same subject, another constituent called me to advise me of litter strewn property. It's kind of behind the Walmart. Uh, it's a little bit further back. It actually separates uh, where Embarcadero is, Districts 1 and 4. And Supervisor Hemmingson and I have had a discussion on that, and plans are now in motion for a Take a Bite Out of Blight volunteer effort to remove the blight. Uh, again, human-created blight, and we'll be giving you more details on that forthcoming. Uh, another big thank you to volunteer Kathleen Benskin for taking time to remove trash, cigarette butts, alcohol bottles, and dog fecal matter from the corner of Summer Lane and Washington Boulevard. Also attended a series of meetings with the Veterans Monument Committee. The Point of Honor project at the S-Curve is moving forward, and we will be reporting on that a little bit later. Spent some time up at Ward Field this past uh, weekend, thanking and appreciating the fire crews battling the four major friars in Del Norte County. There are 700 plus working crews working 12 hour days for 14 straight days. And the good news, no structures are lost. I want to say a big, um, big appreciation thanks for all those heroes who are doing yeoman work up in um, these areas 
and I uh, must tell you I'm so impressed with the way the operation the incident control command center is working just like clockwork it's just absolutely beautiful to watch how everyone does their job and 700 plus people it, it was just amazing uh, supervisor Howard and I took a look at the construction of the new bridge on South Fork it is a two-year project and um, hopefully that will be uh, something a big improvement uh, for those people who traverse that South Fork Road bridge. Uh, another constituent called me regarding um, inquiring if new county employees are drug screen tested. And I learned quite surprisingly that there is no drug screen testing except for our roads department and where employees are screened. So I would ask our board, if we could, please to give direction to our staff at the next meeting to discuss and possibly take action on implementing a drug screen test for all new county hires. I met and chatted with Jeff Harris, who's sitting with us today yesterday, and covered a myriad of issues, and welcome to the community, Jeff. Uh, J Street constituent uh, 1000 block called me, actually a couple of neighbors there called me, expressing concern about a particular property which had very high fences there, you really couldn't see in it, which is a code violation, but behind it was almost knee-high grass, which is absolutely a fire danger. So we put that in the right hands, and Chief Wakefield has that, and hopefully that will be remedied very quickly. Um, the uh, Last week I attended and observed some 80 young adults and their various projects at the Summer Youth Training Academy. That was taking place at the Cultural Center. Uh, yesterday I attended, uh, along with Supervisor Hemmingson, our monthly meeting of the local area formation committee, short name LAFCO. The commission conducted an open hearing to consider LAFCO determinations as contained in what's called the MSR, that's the Municipal Service Review and SOI, Sphere of Influence, for the Crescent City Harbor District. There exists damaged portions of the district's infrastructure, and it has been determined all docks and pilings in the inner boat basin will need to be replaced. The commission approved uh, Resolution 15-03, affirming the statements of these determinations, and as a result, compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act will be exempted. The update will have no possibility or significantly affecting the environment. And lastly, I attended my final meeting of the Del Norte Solid Waste Management Authority a week ago. Ethics charges were leveled against me, which I have denied then and continue to deny today. It matters not. Uh, the authority is moving in another direction one that I cannot embrace, so I resigned. And that is my report. Yeah, thank you. Well, now time for my brief report. Uh, I uh, attended a Pelican Bay Citizens Advisory Committee meeting, and along with uh, uh, other issues, the thing that stuck out to me was the issue of the level one inmates. Um, it appears as though, um, well, it doesn't appear, it is. Um, the, uh, uh, with the direction um, to reduce the populations of, uh, of the state prisons, they have pushed all the level one inmates to county jails, more or less. And so now the level of level one inmates at the state prisons has gotten uh, so low in some institutions, as is at Pelican Bay, um, they are at 25% of capacity. Uh, the state has now said you need to bring those levels up to at least 50% of capacity. So, you know, I don't know. It just seems to be this revolving uh, issue of pushing people here and there. But uh, it, it's a little disappointing that, uh, you know, we end up housing level one inmates and they don't have enough. And <laughs> now they're going to be transporting them in from prisons who maybe have more than 50% of capacity and anyway uh, it just seemed a little bit strange to me uh, that we're dealing with that uh, had a local transportation commission meeting uh, where the issue with 199 hopefully will be resolved soon the report is out um, and uh, now it needs to get go through the proper uh, entities and hopefully we'll hear some sort of news on that uh, had a meeting with uh, Wes White, who is the chair of the Harbor Commission uh, on some harbor issues, um, will be having a two-by-two two with them next week. Uh, met with uh, Supervisor Gitlin, Gitlin on some uh, issues with blight that uh, passed between uh, uh, 
uh, District 1 and District 4, uh, as he reported earlier. I did a gender review, had a RCD meeting, Resource Conservation District meeting. Uh, we had our, as uh, Supervisor Howard uh, noted, we had our first uh, Resource and Environmental uh, Goal Committee meeting, which is going to be at first, I think, just inundated with all kinds of issues because there are so many out there. But we did, uh, we did take up a few uh, as the water sustainability issue that he talked about. We also talked about the mineral withdrawal that's uh, happening on Forest Service BLM property. Uh, we talked about a resource planner, some fire regulations uh, for buildings and roads. Uh, you, you know, there's a bunch of stuff out there and they, they just keep coming in. So um, we're we're kind of needing some help there. So we're looking for a resource planner, a resource person of, of some uh, abilities to uh, take care of that. <clears throat> I had a uh, gathering uh, uh, of friends from the class of uh, 1970. We had a little 45 year class reunion at the ship ashore. Um, it was uh, for kind of a short notice put together kind of a thing. It, uh, it uh, was pretty well attended. And that was all fun. I uh, had a meeting with uh, staff uh, as well as uh, um, uh, code enforcement officer and uh, the auditor on uh, maybe establishing a revolving account for some blight uh, issues uh, along with uh, Supervisor uh, Gitlin. Uh, and as uh, Supervisor Gitlin uh, stated, we had a LAFCO meeting, uh, which we uh, approved the uh, Harbor MSR and, SO, and SOI. Okay, so with that, we're going to get a brief report from the County Administrative Officer. I will try to make it brief. Um, over the last couple of weeks, uh, we have numerous meetings with different departments. I attended the Resource um, Committee meeting also, the Safe and Healthy Families Committee meeting, worked on some uh, budget prep. Uh, one of the more pressing items was related to OES and the Emergency Operations Center, which you acted upon the emergency declaration today. Um, we got involved um, along with uh, the Sheriff's Department. Uh, the Sheriff was uh, involved in all of the meetings prior to the EOC opening up. We opened at a low level, uh, which involved bringing in the animal uh, rescue team and CERT to assist the people of Rock Creek in that area. Um, along with bi-coastal media and uh, something that happened was also a phone call to state parks to close uh, Howland Hill over to uh, Stout Grove, um, which uh, I think the uh, people that were in charge, the incident commander indicated they've never seen a road be closed in a state park with one phone call, but um, uh, Mr. Bomke was able to do that and, and do it quickly to avoid uh, all of the traffic issues that were happening at the bridge that's under construction. Um, along with that, I attended the Hayuchi meeting with uh, Supervisor Howard, and there was a lot of good feedback. Inc Incident Commander Mike Sandwich had indicated and requested that I, um, because you guys give me a few minutes on the, on the mic, be able to thank all the people that have assisted the firefighters and his incident command team uh, they do an excellent job. Um, obviously, that's a larger version of what we do here during any type of an emergency, but uh, it's good to watch them. They have a lot of experience, a lot of good interaction with the public. The questions up at the Hayuchi meeting, I think, were indicative of other meetings that they've had. Um, but he, he really wanted me to thank all of the residents for their cooperation, the cooperation of all of the volunteers and uh, Delmar County's Operation of Emergency Service and obviously the Sheriff's Department who are on the front lines of any type of evacuation or noticing along with search and rescue. So, you know, you see a lot of, uh, a lot of cooperation when these emergencies happen and it goes very smoothly. And to the, uh, you know, in the eyes of some very experienced professionals, uh, Delaware County was extremely well prepared to be able to assist them and assist our own residents. And they said it was virtually seamless. So that was, very good to know, and um, Cindy Henderson is obviously the manager. She leads that. Um, you know, I get to oversee it, but uh, I get the title, and she does all the work, so that's the way it works. But a lot of work from uh, volunteers, and that's what makes this happen. 
Okay. Thank you. Okay. One last, Chairman, one last thing. Oh. We had two requests from the board for direction to staff that I think the board needs to address so that staff understands um, what direction they may be getting. Uh, Supervisor McClure made a request. It was not addressed by the board. And then Supervisor Gitlin made a request that wasn't addressed by the board. Under the uh, policies and procedures manual, when you give direction to staff, you get essentially either a vote or um, a consensus from the board. So in order to make that clear to staff, I would like to see if the board wants to address those two requests. I, I would move actually that we address both requests, both for Cooper Street and for the drug testing issue and have it opened up for discussion the future board meeting. Second. Consensus. Okay, so in the we, we will uh, bring in staff of the Community Development Department as well as administration regarding the two issues and I'll coordinate those and we'll have something for either the next agenda or the agenda following. Great, thank you. Anything else? Okay, we're going to move on to item number 17, uh, which is to approve and authorize Approve, authorize, submit, and file count the county responses to the 2014-15 final grand jury report as requested by the county administrative officer. So I'm going to invite Mr. DeMarco down. He's sitting as conflict counsel because, as you remember, county counsel advises the grand jury. So in this case, Mr. DeMarco will advise the Board of Supervisors and myself. Uh, at the last meeting, we had a discussion over direction, and the board gave direction to myself to prepare a draft. The draft is before you today. Uh, the recommendations and findings have been addressed, and they are addressed to uh, my best ability to provide what actions the board have taken or board members have taken and to address any of the financial or personnel matters that were addressed that the board is obligated to respond to. So I, I'm not sure how you want to handle this. We can go through it item by item. Uh, you can ask questions on specific ones and we can clarify, but the re recommendation before the board today is to approve, submit, and file the county response to the 2014-15 final grand jury report. I don't think we need to go through them one by one. Does anybody want to do that? I, I think if you want to ask questions on any individual uh, responses or findings, uh, I think the supervisors can do that, uh, but I don't. I don't know that we need to go through them line by line. Supervisor Howard. Forget, forget this mic. Sometimes, I, I do have one question, and it's specific to the report on Barrow Boys Ranch, and I want to hear s some discussion about liability. I, I know. Previous grand jury reports have addressed the issue of maintenance at Barrow Boys Ranch. And I know we have state um, inspections annually that um, basically hold us to some level of compliance and whether or not Barrow and that level of maintenance is uh, important or needs to be fixed. How, how do we address the issue of liability if, if something to occur? If let's say the, the grand jury report and that level of maintenance wasn't, wasn't followed through with? Well, we obviously have liability insurance that would protect us in that sense. Regarding the specific finding and recommendation of the grand jury on that particular issue, Title 15 requires that there be inspections on an annual basis, and Borrow has passed all of those inspections. And as I mentioned in there, yes, it would be, it would be uh, advantageous to look at doing the improvements, but they also have to be able to afford those. Um, the recommendation essentially refers to the county putting forward money to do those improvements as a capital improvement. They're not the highest on that priority list because they have passed all of the inspections. It is on the radar of the department head, certainly, and ongoing maintenance is addressed through the building maintenance department um, for very significant uh, improvements above say twenty thousand dollars those would then be prioritized along with building maintenance and then brought forward for a budget consideration um, because of that budget the way it's funded it's funded through 
outside contributions for kids that are brought in as well as um, state funding. It doesn't have a direct general fund cost to it at this point. Um, to take that recommendation would then to reprioritize it and have general fund money shifted. Uh, but it is on, the, on, on their radar. There are other high priority issues up there that they also want to address regarding housing, et cetera. Anyone else? Yes, Supervisor Gitlin. The grand jury is, uh, I don't have any issues with Barrow, Red Mountain, 9-11. They, they did an admirable job. I do have a solid waste operations. Um, my response is this. I would acknowledge receipt of the report with the exception of solid waste operation, authority operations. But I would uh, acknowledge and, and reject the jury's findings on solid waste operations as flawed. So I don't know if that means I have to cast my vote to reject um, the entire report. I don't want to. I will reject the report having to do with solid, oper solid waste operations. So I don't know if there's a mechanism to exclude that, but um, that's what I will do. Yeah, I, I think we're just addressing our responses to the solid waste, I mean, not the solid waste, to the uh, grand jury uh, report. And I think we've addressed the issues of solid waste being addressed by solid waste. Is that not correct? I believe so. Uh, I would ask council to uh, address that. Yes, uh, uh, members of the board, that's exactly the discussion we had the last time that, uh, that the uh, uh, report of the grand jury did not speak directly to a board of supervisors making a response. It was, uh, we tried to make sure that it was pointed out that they have their own separate governing board, they are a separate public entity, and uh, that response will come from that body. All right, thank you. So just for clarification, uh, County Council, uh, this, this particular report uh, would not include solid waste operations because its own entity it has its own governance so everything in this report uh, with the exception of solid waste operations will be addressed at this particular meeting at right now is that what I'm understanding from you sir that is correct okay thank you okay any public comment on responses to the come up to the microphone please and introduce yourself if you would Randall South, and I have a complaint about solid waste. You don't have access to raw materials down there anymore. I it, went to pick it, up this truck. Is, this is in, in regard to the responses, our responses to the, the grand jury report. I'm sorry if I misspoke and said something about solid waste. I would support Roger Gitlin's position on that, and if there's a way to reject just that segment of the report, I, I would support that We well. We basically have. We're yeah, not Jerry, addressing. Yeah. Can I interject on that? Just yeah, hang, hang on just a okay, second. No. Um, we're not addressing solid waste issues. That's not what we're supposed to do. That's that's solid waste problem. So they've already addressed theirs. They've got their responses uh, to the grand jury report. We're only addressing issues that came before this board or came to this board, even though uh, I think we got the entire grand jury report. We are not responding to solid waste issues. I understand. So, my, if I correct, you're saying that uh, this is a recommendation on solid waste uh, from the grand jury. Is that correct? No, we're no. we are only responding to the rest of the grand jury report. Okay. And so I have those... no comment on that. Okay. My complaint was only with solid waste. Thank you. Yes, go ahead, Supervisor Gitlin. Thank you, uh, Supervisor uh, Hemmingson, for that clarification. I, I know this is getting murky, and I know it gets a little confusing and all. The, the discussion we're having right now is SANS Solid Waste Management Authority Operations. It's everything else in that report without solid waste operations. And the reason it is is because this board doesn't have province over the Solid Waste Management Authority. It's a joint powers authority, and it has its own governance. So that's why we're... I th hope that's clear to everybody here and who's watching that we're, we're only talking about the, the uh, matters other than solid waste management. So it's not on the issue here. Okay, thank you. Okay, anybody else? Any other public comment on the responses to the grand jury report? 
Supervisor McClure? I was just going to move that we approve and submit and file the county response to the 2014-15 final grand jury report. And I'll, I'll second, second that. Thank you. Um, Kylie, would you, any other discussion? Kylie, would you please pull the vote? Supervisor Gitlin? Yes. Supervisor McClure? Yes. Supervisor Howard? Yes. Vice Chair Hemmingson? Yes. Okay, down to the last item. Uh, item number tw 23, consider miscellaneous legislative and budget matters. Jay, anything? Yes. Okay. Um, a little bit of legislation rolling through right now. Um, we're following it. We don't have any specific uh, requests before the board today. Um, Assemblyman Wood does have uh, some legislation that's, that's, uh he's proposed, and uh, it has to deal with responding in regards to CDBD applications, which is very good, and uh, we've supported that. Um, regarding our budget, the board will see a draft recommended final budget at the next meeting and it will have it will be balanced now we're meeting this afternoon to some, do some of the final uh, reviews of some of the items that will be recommended that um, will be included since the original recommended was done in June so that one has been available to, to review and now we'll be at the final push um, as I mentioned it it will be balanced and it'll be before the board to open the public hearings on the 20 or on the 8th to hopefully conclude on the 22nd we have until October 2nd to actually make any final decisions on that if there are any types of uh, changes or uh, recommendations and direction from the board those should happen hopefully on the 8th so we have some time to be able to make any types of changes and uh, we'll be able to explain to the board at that time hopefully what if there's um, how difficult those changes might be if any come forward. If there are any questions on process or such, it, I can answer those now. Right on. Anybody else have any legislative or budget issues that they want to bring forward? No? Okay. If I didn't miss anything, uh, I know David jumped around a little bit. I tried to catch everything that, uh, that he did. Hopefully I didn't miss anything with that. We're adjourned. <laughs>